All right, now it's time to start getting into some of the nitty gritty of studying anatomy. And in order to do that, we need a vocabulary uh, in, so that we can make sure that we're being precise about the language we use to describe things. So we're going to learn about anatomic position and anatomic directions. Let's start with anatomic position. This is what it looks like. It is a common point of reference when we're referring to parts of the body. In anatomic position, a person is standing up. Very important. Always make sure you include standing, not lying down, standing. Facing forward, feet together, straight ahead and parallel, head forward, arms down at the sides. Make sure that you don't think the arms are up parallel to the floor. They're down at the sides and the palms are facing forward. So the other thing about anatomic direction is that this is not the natural way you stand, okay? This, but this is how we are going to describe parts of the body. So the palms are facing forward, the thumbs are, pace, are, are lateral, meaning that they are away from the midline of the body. And that's another term we're gonna learn in just a minute. All right, so now before we get there, we need to talk about planes of the body, which are imaginary slices we can divide the body along. This is gonna help us describe where things are in relation to each other. We can also talk about sections. So if we take a, a cut, for example, or an imaginary cut of a, a slice out of you along a plane, that would be a section. So the first, uh, plane that we're going to learn is called the coronal or the frontal plane. Uh, I prefer coronal, but you do need to know both of these names, coronal and frontal. This is a vertical plane that separates the front of the body from the back of the body. So if we do a coronal section through the skull or through the head, we can see part of the brain, the eye sockets, the nasal cavities. Next up is a transverse plane. Transverse planes go horizontally parallel to the floor. There's an infinite number of transverse planes that we can make. Anywhere up or down, we can make a transverse plane through the body. A transverse plane through the cranium here shows us the eyes and the brain. The mid-sagittal plane is another vertical line through the center of the body separating right from left. So this is what the brain looks like if we do a mid-sagittal section. Now, normally, we're not really exactly precise, and we can't tell if we're dividing something exactly down the middle. And so we actually usually talk about just a sagittal plane. Uh, that is, anything that's not, we're not certain is actually in the middle, it's a sagittal section. And again, there's a, an infinite number of sagittal planes to the right or the left. Notice the spelling of sagittal, please. S-A-G-I-T-T-A-L. Please make sure you spell it correctly. There's one G and two T's. Now, when we divide or take sections of an organ, or when we take sections of a tissue to make, for example, a microscope slide, Depending on where we take that section, we can get shapes that are not what we expect. So here is uh, an intestine, and you can see that it's round if we do an exact section through it. But if you section it not exactly uh, 180 degrees perpendicular to the, um, the middle of it, we can get an oval Depending on where we go, we could sometimes get um, even two uh, rings or a long piece of tissue like this. So be aware of that when you're looking at microscope slides. A lot of things that you expect to be round won't be round, or the whole thing might not be showing. It might not be a complete loop, as you would expect. And it just has to do with where that tissue was sectioned, okay? Now onto anatomic directions. These are the terms that we're gonna use when we're describing where something is in relation to something else. And I am going to use as my example, Wile E. Coyote, because he is the best cartoon character. I will accept no arguments on that point. Now, anterior means front. Ante means before. 
Uh, if you speak Spanish or Italian or French, uh, these terms are going to be more familiar to you because these a lot of these are based on Latin. Uh, some of them are also based on Greek. So if you speak Greek, that would be helpful. Um, so anything that is anterior is toward the front of the body. So for example, a coronal section separates the anterior of the body from the posterior. The uh, Wiley Coyote's nose is the most anterior thing on his body. Now, Anterior is similar to ventral, which in humans. Anterior and ventral are the same thing in humans, but they are not the same thing in animals. So I know this is a class in human anatomy, but I just want you to have this in your brain that when we say ventral in humans, we mean the belly side, the front of the body. When we say ventral in animals, any fish or any animal that um, walks on four legs or a worm, for example, it's the belly side of the animal, which is normally down, posterior or inferior. Uh, this is an echidna, by the way. It is a an ant eating uh, an ant eater, a spiny ant eater. There's that's the words I'm looking for from Australia. Uh, it will not try to kill you. They're actually quite peaceful. Uh, anyway, so this is the ventral side of the echidna, closer to the ground. The uh, posterior direction, posterior, is to the back. So uh, on Wiley Coyote, his cheeks actually extend to the posterior. His posterior is on the posterior, because <laughs> some people call it your butt posterior. Anyway, dorsal uh, is the back side of the body. Uh, and uh, in humans, posterior is dorsal. Again, not the same in animals. I cannot remember the difference between ventral and dorsal. I can't remember which one is which, so I always think of the scary dorsal fin on a shark, and then I have to go, okay, dorsal's on the back, ventral's on the front. Hopefully, you won't need that, but if you do, there you go, dorsal, back. Humans, it's the back. Uh, animals, it's the, uh, the top side. Okay, superior means above. So in humans, we are talking about something that's closer to the head or on the head, the top of the head. Uh, Wiley Coyote's eyes are superior to his cheeks, meaning they are above. The echidna's spines are superior to its paws. Okay? On the echidna, the dorsal side is superior. On the Wiley Coyote, the dorsal side is posterior. See how you can use these together? Inferior means below, and in humans, this means closer to the feet. Wiley Coyote's cheeks are inferior to his eyes. His eyes are inferior to his ears. Um, so now notice that when we're using these terms, they are relative terms. We can't say the eyes are superior because they're not superior to everything. The eyes are superior to the mouth, but the eyes are inferior to the ears, okay? So remember that these terms are relative. We're talking about something relative to something else. We could talk about the superior end of something, uh, but we can't talk about something just being superior. All right, now, cranial means toward the head. The top of the head is called the cranium. So cranial means toward the head. Uh, wily coyotes are cranial to his shoulders, closer to the head. They're literally, well, on the head. The opposite of that is caudal, which means at the tail end. Now, cranial and caudal are really useful in, again, quadruped animals, because cranial is anterior and caudal is posterior. But in humans and wily coyote, the tail is in the middle of the body. Then you got these legs sticking down. So in humans, we use superior and inferior. They're more precise than cranial or caudal, but you will see cranial and caudal used. So make sure you know what they mean. Now, medial means toward the midline of the body or toward the mid-sagittal plane, closer to the center of the body. 
Wiley e. Coyote's chest hair tuft right here is medial on his body. So it's the most medial thing on his body. Uh, his nose is the most medial thing on his body. Uh, his heels, when he's standing like this, are medial to his toes. Now, lateral means away from the midline, so farther to the side, okay? Um, now, don't say farther out, because what do you mean? Do you mean farther out to the side? Do you mean farther out to the top? Do you mean farther out to the bottom? It's not specific, and we need to be very, very specific when we're talking about anatomical terms. Think of uh, what would happen if uh, in a medical uh, situation someone used an imprecise term. Uh, you really need to know exactly where on a patient you're talking about when you're talking about things. So medial and lateral, again, refer to positions on the body in relation to other things. So the coyote's nose is medial to his cheeks. Okay? The eyes are medial to the cheeks, but the eyes are lateral to the nose. Okay, see that? Now, we have these other two terms that I just love. Ipsilateral means on the same side. Ipsy means same. And contralateral means on the opposite side. Contra is different. So your right hand and right foot are ipsilateral. Your right hand and left foot are contralateral. The hemispheres of your brain control the muscles on the contralateral side of your body means that the right side of your brain controls the left side of your body. We don't use ipsilateral very often. Contralateral is more common. Now, one other pair of terms that sometimes people have trouble with is proximal and distal. Proximal refers to closer to the point of origin of the body part. So the elbow is proximal to the fist, meaning it's closer to the point of origin, which is here, okay? The arm originates here and goes down. The legs originate here and go down. The bicep is at the proximal end of the arm, okay? The elbow, however, is distal to the bicep, and the fist is distal to the elbow. Okay, so proximal means closer to the point of origin. Distal means farther away. Now, we normally talk about the proximal end of something or the distal end of something, okay? Um, but we will talk about terms in relation to each other as one thing being proximal to something else, meaning closer to the point of origin. Um, now, these are not used when referring to parts of the head or trunk, okay? The trunk doesn't have a proximal and distal end. It is the point of origin of the arms and legs. You could talk about the proximal end of the tail, the distal end of the tail, okay? You can't talk about the proximal and distal ends of the head because the head doesn't really have an origin. It's, it's, it's the head, okay? It's, it's a thing. We will talk as we get uh, later into the semester about proximal and distal ends of organs. For example, your small intestine, the proximal end is where it meets the stomach. The distal end is where it meets the large intestine. Okay, so that's proximal and distal. Superficial means closer to the outside. Uh, deep means more inside. So imagine that you took this obviously perfectly anatomically correct gummy bear model. Yes, your gummy bears do have organ systems inside. Of course, I'm kidding, but isn't this cool? Uh, so imagine that you took this. The superficial layer is the plastic skin. You could take that superficial layer off and touch the deeper layers, which would be, in this case, the bones. You could then take those layers off and get to the layers that were deeper than those. So the skin is superficial to the skull, the skull is superficial to the brain, okay? But the skull is deep to the skin. So this, again, we have relative terms talking about relative to something else. 
The sternum of the gummy bear, that's that bone right there, is deep to the skin, but superficial to the heart. And yes, the gummy bear, of course, has a heart. It's a gummy bear. Of course it does. So, to review, anterior is to the front, posterior is to the back, superior to the top, inferior to the bottom, medial toward the midline, lateral away from the midline, proximal at the closer to the point of origin, distal farther away from the point of origin. Okay, so we're going to have a worksheet uh, and we're going to have a uh, quiz, a practice quiz for you to practice these. Uh, and then I, I also want you to uh, participate in a discussion about these. So get used to these anatomic directions, use them all the time, practice them with other people. We're going to use them a lot.